know, years ago on TV when I was a kid, I remember I would watch TV and they had this comedy team that would come on all the time named Alan and Rossi. And it was like, um, it was like a Marty Allen. He was this crazy, frizzy-haired comic. And uh, Rossi, Steve Rossi, was kind of his Dean Martin, the handsome straight man who could sing. And But Marty was absolutely out of his mind and, and could always crack up an audience. He certainly always cracked me up. And he was wild looking and made the weirdest faces and, and did dances that you figure only a cartoon character could do. Now, Alan and Rossi have the rare privilege of being able to say they followed the Beatles on Ed Sullivan. Ed Sullivan was already the biggest show on TV at the time, and the one that they had the Beatles on, forget it. That was beyond like everyone in the world was watching it, so they followed the Beatles. Since then, they split up, and Marty Allen's been working with his wife, and we we asked, they, they actually asked, the TV show actually asked Marty Allen to go on, and he's like, wow, I don't know, he's must... I don't know if he's 90 yet or damn close to 90 or maybe 100 for all I know. And he said, I can't go on there. I'm booked solid. So now we talk to Marty Allen. Hi, this is Gilbert Gottfried, and you're listening to the amazing Colossal Podcast I'm here with my uh, friend and uh, co-host, Frank Santo Padre. Hello, Gilbert. Hi. Okay, that's it for today's <laughs> show. Yes. That's a wrap. Oh, yeah. that was great, <laughs> yeah. Gilbert. That's a wrap. You really touched me emotionally. <laughs> well, that that's the only way I want to touch you, Marty. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> nice to meet you, Marty. Yeah, my pleasure. Now, today, you uh, you want to... Well, I was just... I thought it was interesting timing that it's the 50th anniversary of the Beatles playing the Sullivan Show this month. In fact, it was just... Oh, well, yeah. And, and I, I, I've and, done so many interviews, I feel like I'm the fifth Beatle already. <laughs> there are a lot of fifth Beatles, Marty. So tell us about, uh, tell us about playing with them, meeting with them, following them in 64. Well, it, it was it was it was uh, a fantastic. First of all, uh, when we w- it, it was at the David Letterman Theater, you know, uh, where David Letterman is doing his show now, and uh, Steve and Steve Rossi and I had, were in the limousine, and there were thousands of little girls uh, backstage waiting <laughs> to to catch a glimpse. And our limousine pulled up, and the kids were yelling, Ringo, George, John, Paul. And I kept yelling, Marty, Marty, Marty. And then they threw notes in our window, love notes and photos. And it was unbelievable. It, it, It really was unbelievable. And then we went in the theater, and it was like pandemonium. And uh, I said to Steve, I got to come up with some kind of a line to get him right off the bat. When we do our afternoon show, the kids were screaming. And when they introduced us, I walked out and I said, hello there, I'm Ringo's mother. And the kids yelled, it's his mother. And they start screaming. <laughs> and I jumped in the audience. And I had told Steve, don't do a ballad, do an up-tempo song. So he did an up-tempo song, and I was dancing with the kids where they went out of their mind. And then we went back on the stage and did our act. And uh, uh, I I knew right off the bat they they were going to be a sensation. 
They were, and not only that, they were wonderful. They were kind, uh, very courteous. They had no idea who I was. And at that time, I had that Zulu haircut. Uh, <laughs> and, and they kept looking at me. And, and John was getting ready to go on in about 20 minutes. I walked over to him and I said, John, he said, yes. I said, a lot of people mist <laughs> mistake me for you. And he looked at me like, oh, my God. <laughs> he went bananas. And then I got a hold of a policeman's hat and a jacket off of one of the cops. And I started following Ringo everywhere he went. And he was going bananas. I said, I have to protect you. Then he went in the men's room, and I stood guard. He says, well, you you really are supposed to protect me? And he, I said, yes. And he said to me, make sure you wash your hands when we leave. <laughs> and uh, I, I, I remember the, uh, the song uh, that they, the first song they did was All My Loving. That's but right. the week before they appeared on the Sullivan Show, the hot song was, I Want to Hold Your Hand. And I also know that the, for performing on the Sullivan Show for the three shows, they received $10,000. Wow. How about that? And they got a, one telegram, and, and do you know who it was from? Who? Elvis Presley, my dear friend Elvis Presley, now, sent him a congratulation, a wire of congratulations. Now you, and you, I thought that was class. You followed the Beatles more than one time, I heard. Oh yeah, we did. We did the other show in Miami also, and uh, and uh, I remember the how much they got for a front row ticket. To their first concert in America, four dollars. Wow! <laughs> How do you like that? And uh, uh, one of the girls stole uh, from Ringo. She pulled his Saint Christopher medal off, and he went bananas. And and he begged to, to get it back. And finally, the girl got it back, and he gave her an autograph photo. And uh, he felt much better about that. And uh, uh, let's see, uh, I'm trying to think. Then they went on tour. I remember they went on tour. And uh, uh, their North American tour, yeah. they, they must have done about 22,000 miles across the, our continent now, if, in if, a little over a month. Wow. Now, if, and uh, <laughs> uh, when they said uh, how many, roughly how many people saw them on the tour? He's taking over the show. <laughs> That's it. Oh, well, yeah, I'll tell I, you. I just. 154,000 people I, saw I'm just, them. I'm on, just going to go and get lunch. <laughs> <laughs> now that I gave you all the information, can I hang up? No. <laughs> That's all we needed. Now, now, now I want to know when these photos... That the girls, were there any, like, what type of photos were they? What do you mean? The, the ones they threw through were the window they, of the Were they limo? decent photos? I mean, like, uh, photos that you could no, show. I know where you're going. Yeah. <laughs> you know they me all too well. They were photos. <laughs> that, they, were. they were just photos of, of themselves. Oh. You know, in school or whatever. Oh, that's too bad. And yeah. I love you, Ringo. I love you, Paul. I love you, John. I love you, George. See, I was picturing... Those were the kind of photos they threw through the window of the limo. Could you, you change... Know. when Next time you tell a story, can you say they were pornographic photos? No, I can't <laughs> say that. Oh, Gilbert. <laughs> because... At that, at that time, my, my face was so broken out, I can't take kids. <laughs> <laughs> now, I heard that you were also 
became friends with John Lennon. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he, he, after he found out who I was and he watched the act, he was, uh, he walked over to me and, and very nicely said to me, you're, you're really, uh, very funny. He gave me a very nice compliment. And, uh, he was, he was really a nice guy. They all were. They were, uh, but I could tell right off the bat, I said, they're going to be a sensation in our country. And, and did you and John... And the first song that they were singing, uh, I believe, was All My Loving. That was the did, first one. Did you and John talk, like, a lot to each other? Oh, no, we no. didn't have that much time because... Uh, Sullivan more or less uh, kept them very busy, you know. And don't forget, this was their first big appearance, and they had other things on their mind. And I didn't want to get into a deep now, call. Now, I heard, I was, I was talking to a friend of mine who knows Eugenio, and I, I, I asked, I thought, you might want to tell some of your jokes on the air. And he said, you don't like in public saying stuff that's off color. Off color? Yeah. Well, like- I, 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 let me see. I, I, I really, I, I've never done anything like that, Gilbert. That's your, that's your great talent. <laughs> Can you My t- favorite joke, <laughs> I remember one of the first jokes I ever did. Yeah. The, there were two guys that were drunk. They were at the zoo, and they were standing by the lion's cage. <laughs> and they were, were looking at the lion, and all of a sudden, the lion let, let out a tremendous roar. And the one grunt says, okay, well, let's go now. And the other one says, no. I'm going to stay and watch the movie. (laughs) (laughs) Marty, let me ask you about Ed Sullivan, because I read an interview with you. You said he was a very... Well, I'll tell you, people ask me how many Sullivan shows we did. Uh I tell everybody, I did more Sullivan shows than Ed Sullivan. (laughs) <laughs> but you said he was a nice guy, and not everybody in the he business was. considered him a nice guy, which I found interesting. Yeah, uh, he took a liking to Steve and I, and the reason he used that so often is, uh, I hate to tell this to Gilbert, but it, because we did a <laughs> oh, plain him. act, and then he knew he'd never have any problems. <laughs> so, uh, so, so, so in other know, words... Uh, we'd never say anything or do anything that would embarrass him on... He was very strict on the show, I'll tell you that. So, so that's, that's the difference and between... in those days, you couldn't do a commercial, because if you did a commercial, he thought you were money. Um, that bugged him. So you, you, anything in, in your routine that would... familiarity uh, to a product... He, he wouldn't allow it. But uh, there were things that I thought about that I would love to have done. But uh, he, he, was, he was very kind to us, so, and he really liked us. So un, un, unlike me, uh, you, you work very clean. Yeah, I know. <laughs> what about it, Gilbert? <laughs> Can you tell? Can you tell? Hey, one Gilbert, of, did you know the Harvard School of Medicine did a study of Jewish women why they like Chinese food so much? <laughs> why? Okay, Marty. Do you why? know why they why? like Chinese food so much? Why? <laughs> the study revealed that the reason for this is because wonton spelled backwards is not now. <laughs> now, a couple of times, 
On the <laughs> a couple... And the other thing, Gilbert, there's a controversy on the Jewish view of when life begins. According to Jewish tradition, the fetus is not considered viable until it graduates from law school. <laughs> Oh my God, I'm making Gilbert laugh. <laughs> Somebody take this. Somebody take this. I, we're, we're trying to. As a thought. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, can you tell that a couple of times on the phone, you've told what? me jokes that were uh, not, not really network TV friendly. Would you be able to tell one of those? Um, where? Uh, here, on my podcast. It's okay, Marty. No one's listening. <laughs> <laughs> I just gave you two good. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're the only two people <laughs> listening to this podcast. Oh, I don't believe <laughs> that, Gilbert. <laughs> I know your fans. <laughs> They're glued to your broadcast. May, may I say... Then one of the jokes you told me. One of the jokes I, well, the jokes I told you were in complete confidence. Oh, okay. And the only reason right. I told uh, them to okay, you, okay. So you could use them. No, oh, no, then no problem, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> so you're more decent in your material than I am. <laughs> well. You have a knack for doing a uh, certain kind of humor. Oh, you know, I remember something that uh, I, I was looking up uh, different things. You know, I'm writing a book about my life, and I remember when I met George Burns. Gilbert, you got to hear this. Yes. He told me, if I, if, if I get big laughs, I'm a comedian. If I get small laughs, I'm a humorist. <laughs> and if I get no laughs, I'm a singer. <laughs> <laughs> so did you know George Burns well? Yeah, he was very... He saw me work, and he, and he gave me a very wonderful... Com uh, he said to me, you are truly... Uh, a very funny physical comedian, and I, I I flipped out when he said that to me. He was so nice, he really was. And he said, uh, uh, "Where do you get your humor?" I said, "I just it just comes to me naturally, you know. Uh, being physically funny, uh, many things could happen." Uh, and I, I can ad lib my way through uh, many, many, like being on the Mike Douglas show or doing Hollywood Squares or doing the different shows. Uh, I was never told what to say or how to say it because I knew that uh, uh, it would come off very funny. Now, and I... you have that talent. Oh, too. thank you. Now, yeah. I. I rem I saw a clip of you on the Dean Martin show. Yeah. And you you accidentally I forget the guy, damn it. Uh you accidentally pulled someone's toupee off. Oh yeah. <laughs> that was one of the most famous things. I was dancing and it was Leslie Huggins and, and Dean Martin and uh Eddie Foy. Oh okay. and, uh, while I was dancing, Eddie Foy suddenly put his hands up and started pulling my hair. Because, you know, at that time I had the wild hair and everybody, it was one of my uh, physical attributes. And when he started pulling my hair, I reached up and grabbed his hair and it was a toupee and it came off. When, well, everybody collapsed. I think Leslie Huggins and Dean Martin, they got so hysterical, they almost fell over. 
That was one of the funniest things that ever happened. And, and he, well, a lot of funny things happened. And, and he yeah. played it very well. Because yeah. when he got the toupee back, he just sort of put it on his head and arranged it yeah, and acted right. like nothing happened. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was one of the most hysterical. Another thing, I did a Hollywood Palace, and I walked in, uh, uh, Martha Ray was on, and uh, I, asked, I asked her to do my hair. And uh, I brought the, 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 uh, all the uh, essentials, but in the meantime, she had a box there with baking powder, and she used the wrong powder, and it was for baking uh, a cake. <laughs> and she rubbed it on my hair, and at the end of the uh, program, when she took the thing off, there was a cake on my hair. <laughs> Now, did you know... And she asked me what it was like to be when I was a kid, what kind of a kid I was. I said I used to play spin the bottle. You remember the game? Yeah. Spin the bottle? Sure. Yes. And a girl would spin the bottle, and the bottle pointed to you when it stopped. The girl could kiss you or give you a nickel. <laughs> and by the time I was 13 years old, I owned my own home. <laughs> Great joke. <laughs> Marty, I have to ask you about the hair. Was it really your hair or was it a... Was yeah, it, was it was it a, my hair. Was it something you... I was the first one, actually, to uh, have, uh, you know, the, the wild hair. Even before anybody even thought of it, they used to look at me and they said, "What kind of wig is that?" I said, "No wig, it's my hair." <laughs> if you grew it purposely like that for the act, and then, uh, I just uh, let it grow. I see, and it became a, a phenomenal hairstyle, and I kept it uh, all the time. Uh, Alan and Rossi were together, and then when. Uh, we split the act. Oh, I got a call that uh, uh, the producer of the Big Valley, the Barbara Sandwich show. Oh, yes. Sure. And they they said to me, would you cut your hair? Well, I wanted to do acting. I said, yes. And I remember when they cut it, it was a big celebration. And in fact, I think the guy used a... Uh, uh, I think it was Saul Goldstein, the barber, and he used a torch. Uh, like uh, they made a big deal out of it, and uh, and that was the first time uh, I got all kind of write-ups. Earl Wilson and all the columnists, uh, Jim Bacon, everybody saying Marty cut his hair. <laughs> the big big deal. Did anyone talk about your acting though? About what? Your acting. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I played a Jonah. I was given a tremendous part, and it went over so well. I was uh, nominated for a couple of awards for my acting, and Barbara Sandwich, uh, uh, we were sitting one day talking, and she was telling me how, how wonderful an actor I could become a, a very good actor if I gave up comedy. She said, you did one great job. Wow. And I played the genre. And if you ever can get a hold of it, it's uh, quite a thing. So, if you know what a Jonah is, it's the guy that comes to the ranch and everything goes uh, wrong. And the, all the guys on the, on, on the staff... No, I don't mean on the staff. All the uh, people who worked yeah. on the uh, on the yeah. ranch said you got to get rid of him. He's a bad luck guy, and like the uh, rains came, that, that, the cattle ran away, and different things happened. They blamed it on me. That that's kind of like what was that uh, 
Uh, yeah, William Johnny Macy. Little Abner. Oh, the cooler. Mr. Mc- the cooler. Mr. Mc- yeah. Mc- he had a funny name. Yes. Now, tell us another one of your jokes. Oh, oh. Well, <laughs> they used to ask me when I was a kid what I liked to do. I says, well, I like to play all kind of games. I never liked hide and seek because when I hid in the closet, my family moved. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> now, I can I throw out just some names to you of people you may have worked with or known? Now, Groucho Marx. Groucho? Yes. Yeah. Very, very uh, intellectually funny. He was a very nice guy. Uh, uh, I remember when when I met him. Uh, yeah, he was. You know, he he had a, a an unusual sense of humor. But uh, uh, most of the guys, uh, Gilbert, the, the big ones were always very nice. I met Jack Benny. I met, you know, I worked with Sinatra. I worked with Nat Cole. I worked with uh, Paul Anka. I worked with Lena Horn. I worked with Shirley Bassey from London. And these are all big stars. And all the big stars, they never come off as, uh, uh, you know, they, conceited. They were all, they were all they, considerate they are, people. El, El, Elvis, Elvis took a liking to me, and uh, he, he came to see my show when I was appearing uh, at the Sands of the Flamingo at that time. And uh, they, they're, they're all class guys, all class. So, Never any problems. So both no conceit. And uh, <laughs> we're always willing to help you or tell you how much they enjoyed you. And they came, if they came to see the show, they were uh, just wonderful people. So both the Beatles and Elvis Presley were fans and friends of Marty Allen. Yes, yeah, I could say that. And and did you socialize at all with Elvis? Oh, yeah, Elvis invited me many times up to his, when he was at the Hilton uh, many times uh, he would have, uh, after the show, he'd have, uh, uh, you know, big uh, uh, affairs up in the suite, and he'd have singers, and in fact, I had a, I did the last show with a very wonderful, talented, phenomenal woman, and you know who it was? Who? Mama Cass. Wow. wow. Big fan. So Be uh, right before she passed away. What, what were these parties? And like? At that time, I was very heavy. I was uh, really uh, almost weighed about 200 pounds. <laughs> Joe Miller, the famous uh, uh, booker here in Vegas, he booked Mama Cass and I together, and they titled it The Heavyweight of the strip. Wow. <laughs> That's great. Now, what were these parties at Elvis's like? Well, he invite every he invite the singers up, so he and, the, and his group would sing all kind of songs, and they, you know, they had uh, uh, beautiful uh, table of all kind of sandwiches and stuff, and if you were lucky enough to be friendly with him and were invited. Uh, it was a great compliment. But he, I, I had a lot of laughs with him. Uh, he, he, he was just a wonderful human being. That's Elvis. Elvis and you hanging out. Try to picture yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, that's something. Elvis, you and the Beatles. <laughs> It's got like Elvis and the Beatles. All right, now, now, Marty, Marty, 
every uh, every so I I just I need another joke. <laughs> oh come on! Joe. I love I love your jokes. I'm a victim. Yeah. Yes, I'm a victim to your jokes when I hear them. <laughs> you you really like them? Yes, I love your jokes. Oh yeah, uh, a guy went to the doctor and he said I have a ringing in my ear, and the doctor said don't answer. <laughs> and he, and uh, the doctor had a stethoscope up to the man's chest and the man says hey doc how do I stand and the doctor says that's what puzzles me <laughs> <laughs> and the doctor says you're going to live to be 70 years old he says, I am 70 years old. The doctor says, see, what did I tell you? <laughs> <laughs> I, I got uh, I got to tell you, a couple of years ago, I went to see you and your wife perform in New York. Oh, yeah, I remember. Yes, and it was a great show. And, Thank and, you. And, in and, fact, that was the first time I actually met you in person. Oh, that's right. Yeah, it was uh, Gino who brought you. Yes, so Gino, Gino Salomon. Salomon. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Gino Salomon. He brought. He said, "I'm bringing a friend of mine." Gino. I said, "Who?" He says, "Gilbert Godfrey." I said, "Oh, I watch him on television. He's an extremely funny man." Oh wow! Thank you. Mark. And I did. I, I I've always well. I came to see you when you were in Vegas. Yes, yes. I I found out about that. Like I was there. This was just. It it seems like maybe like a week or so after. Oh, I remember it was the, uh, at the Michael Feinstein. Uh, that's where it was. Yes. And then, uh, like a short time later, I was working Vegas, and I look in the first row, and there yeah, you I were. was. Yeah, I, I was honored. Well, and I, I, I went to see you because I, I sincerely believe, Gilbert, I'm not pulling any kind of thing you said. <laughs> you, you're, you're really a funny man. Uh, you got a lot of talent. And stay in the business because something good will happen. <laughs> I remember after the show in Vegas, I was I was in uh, out in the lobby selling like DVDs and books. Yeah, and, and that's you, shocking. Yeah, you were, peddling, you were peddling your merch after yes, the show. Yeah, that's very that's so un- unlike you. I'll be looking for a new co-host. <laughs> <laughs> I came up. Yeah. You tell him what I did. Yes. Yeah. You you want to tell him what you did to me? <laughs> I said I want you to meet my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Marty. Yeah, first. Uh, yeah. First, Marty comes up to me, and he, he says, hello, great show, blah, 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 great, it was, and I say, great seeing you, and then he says, good night, and he walks away, and I'm signing autographs and whatnot, then he comes back with this, you know, very large, heavy black woman <laughs> that he grabbed out of the crowd, <laughs> and just using her as a prop. Uh, brings her over to me with his arms around her and said, have you met my wife? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she was very nice. <laughs> no, she was a very dear friend of mine. She, oh, so I, you knew her? I know her for quite a oh, while. Oh, because I thought it was just some random black person you grabbed, <laughs> and I thought that could be dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> That was, I was cracking up. Oh, yeah, somebody asked me, no, did they ever ask you who, who, uh, who were the heroes in your life? Oh, Gilbert, me? if you think back, who uh, have you always admired or, or who have you always looked up to? Or 
or when you were growing up, did you have any particular oh. heroes? Oh, so many. And I will. And I'm not just saying this because you're on. I no, uh, aside from me. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Well. <laughs> <laughs> I okay. Here's it was one I I loved as a kid, and I wonder if you'll have nice things to say about him. And that's Jerry Lewis. And then the and then it went dead. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh. What? I had two heroes when I was growing yes. up. Joe Lewis, uh, Sugar Ray Robinson, the original Sugar Ray Robinson, yes. uh, Joe Lewis. And uh, Franco Harris of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Those were my heroes. Yeah. But Jerry Lewis, did you uh, have? Did you ever work with Jerry Lewis? Well, I knew Jerry very well. I, I never worked with him. And you got along with him? Oh yeah, we 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 always got along. I never had any problems. I I, I admired him for his talent. Yeah, you know you got to give Jerry credit. He he's a brilliant, he was a brilliant man uh, as far as movies are concerned. I mean, aside from Martin Lewis being a sensation, but uh, as a as a movie maker, he really knew what he was doing. Now you you made a you and and your partner Steve Rossi made a movie yourselves. Yeah, Last of the Secret Agents. Last of the yeah, Secret Agents. Uh, we, it was a lot of fun. And we had uh, Nancy Sinatra and one of the most marvelous uh, actors, uh, Lou Jacoby. Oh, yes. I oh, love, love Lou Jacoby. And Remember f- him? And, and, oh, yes, absolutely. And Marty did. He was one of the most brilliant uh uh, screen comedians that I ever, I thought he had more talent than so he, many others. He was great. And didn't Nancy Sinatra sing the theme song too, Marty? Uh, yeah, yeah. And she was she was in the movie too. Yeah. Now, now we also and and Frank pointed it out to me, and I'm amazed at this. Who was the director? Uh, Abbott. Norm Abbott. And he was related? Uh, Norm Abbott and uh, uh, I'm trying to think who. The writer was a very yeah. famous well, Mel, but, Mel Tolkien. Yes. Mel but, Tolkien, But yeah. was Abbott related to uh, Bud yeah. Abbott? Uh, he was, uh, uh, I believe he was the nephew of Bud Abbott. Wow. Of Abbott and Costello. Wow. So, so he knew comedy teams. <laughs> no, he <laughs> now, did you well, ever? Everybody says, "Who are the comics of today?" That yeah. I said, "Well, I, I don't know them personally, but they're all in Washington." <laughs> <laughs> well, Mel Tolkien of uh, your show of shows fame wrote that movie for you, Marty. What's that, sir? Mel Tolkien, the, the famous comedy writer. Oh, Mel uh, was a for Sid brilliant comedy writer. Now, what? You know, when you think of, uh, speaking of comedy writers, when uh, when somebody just asked me, uh, Sid Caesar, you know, uh, it's very sad to know he recently passed away. What a com- comedian he was. A brilliant, brilliant comic. And think of the writers that he had on his show. Think of who his writers were. Yeah, sure. Woody Allen. Uh, and, and, Mel and, Brooks. Uh, Larry Gelbart. Neil Simon. Yeah. Carl all, Reiner. All those famous guys were were writers on, on the uh, Sid Caesar show. Now, what? Yeah, because I remember watching you all the time on all the TV shows. And what um, what was the split up between you and Steve Rossi? Well, to be honest, uh, 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 Gilbert, we had great success. We had marvelous success. And then we kept going over and we kept doing, uh, you know, how many times 
Uh, I started to think, how many times can you play the Copacabana in New York? How many times can you play the Shapery in Chicago? And uh, and do all all you know all the clubs, and uh, I we had great success, but I felt I wanted to do more uh, than just being uh, part of a great comedy team. I wanted to do acting. I wanted I was getting all kind of calls, now, Gilbert. Now what kind of acting? One of the biggest calls I ever got was. Uh, 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 Mary Markham, they asked me to be on, uh, Hollywood Squares and, uh, and to be, uh, an individual personality. Uh, I said, oh, what a wonderful thought to be with, uh, Paul Lynn and, and Charlie Weaver and those, uh, you know, those guys. Wally Cox. You know, and it was, yeah. Now, what was. What? And I wanted to do more, and I wanted to do more acting, and, and there were things that I wanted to do. And I, I said to Steve, listen, we've, we've had great success, and I, I just felt that now was the time that we should part. And that's the way. And we are, I could probably say we are the only comedy team to split amicably. Wow. I still see Steve, he lives in Vegas, and occasionally we have lunch or we see each other, but uh, I, I never wanted to, you know, uh, have any kind of uh, 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 terrible parting. Oh, so we, spent, we are actually... Uh, the only team that I know of that split very amicably. Because every comedy team seems like they hate each other. Like Martin and yeah. Lewis hated each other. Yeah. Uh, Abbott and Costello hated each other. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we never fought over any. We just went out and did our job. <laughs> Excuse me. And I, uh, we enjoyed. And then, uh, then when I met Karen, uh, uh, in a restaurant and, uh, I heard her singing, I got the idea of a husband and wife because of Burns and Allen. In fact, today they call us the new George Burns and Grace. Oh, Allen. wow. Oh, only I'm Gracie. Wow. <laughs> That's quite a compliment. I'm Gracie. <laughs> <laughs> and she is not only a brilliant singer, she's a phenomenal boy. Uh, uh, Gilbert, you saw her. Oh, it was great. A great straight lady. And and I I remember you coming out as, I think, Lady Gaga. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, didn't didn't you come out as Lady Gaga at one point? Yeah, no, I came out as Lady Gaga's father. <laughs> I came out in a wild outfit as Lady Gaga's father. Although I came out, uh, oh, uh, the the first time uh, uh, we did Hey Big Spender. And and Karen introduced, she says, we have the great talent of Shirley McLean, and I came out in drag. And she, and, and Karen and I did Hey, Big Spender, <laughs> and I played Shirley McLean. It was sweet charity. Now, now what, um, let, let's, oh, geez. I uh, see you just stepped over me, Marty, and now I'm gone. <laughs> Marty, Marty, talk about Nat King Cole first introducing you to Steve. Is that how it happened? Yeah. Well, I, uh, well, uh, I, I, I'm from Pittsburgh, uh, Pennsylvania, and uh, I was like the local comic who became, uh, you know, uh, after the war, 
I, I started playing small clubs in my hometown and built up a re reputation. And one day the agent said to me, I got you on, on a, on a, in a club here in town with a very good singer. So I said, oh, great. Uh, I said, Who, who's the singer? He said, well, you're going to open for her. I said, I'm going to open for her. I said, who is it? You want to hear who it was? Sarah Vaughn. Wow. And I says, oh, my God, Sarah Vaughn. I've, I've, I've been, uh, you know, a great admirer of Sarah. Uh, like Ella Fitzgerald, you know, two of the greatest singers in the world. <laughs> and she took a liking to me. And she called... Uh, 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 Nat Cole, because in those days, in all the agencies, the hardest thing were singers, if, if, if you uh, uh, recall. And they would use a comedian to open the show for them. So the comic would do like 20 minutes, and then the singer would come up. And uh, she recommended me to Nat Cole, and his manager... Uh, got me uh, with Nat, and uh, there, there's no way to, there are not enough superlatives to tell you how wonderful a man Nat King Cole was. Not only uh, a gr one of the greatest talents that ever lived, but as a human being, he was unbelievable, and he was kind and very thoughtful, and uh, we got along very wonderful together. Now, I I think <laughs> Nat, Nat King Cole, when he first got either his television show or radio show, was only like 15 minutes long. Oh, yeah. You're right. They, they he had a great sure. show. I, and I think they weren't sure if people would want, like, a black performer on for that long. And so uh -huh. they gave him, like, 15 minutes. And then it was a big deal when it was moved to a full half hour. He announced it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're right, Gilbert. But in that 15 minutes, he showed uh, how diversified he was. He was a brilliant piano player uh, as well as being because you know he started out with the Nat King Cole trio but he not only was a brilliant uh, piano player he was a phenomenal singer and he had a warm uh, compassionate feeling uh, the way he did he was like Sinatra you would say Nat King Cole and Frank Sinatra we're, uh, we're two of the greatest singers in our lifetime. Now, and now, Marty, I'm just, and then this, I'm just uh, throwing out at you because so many people do an imitation of what Nat King Cole sounded like. Mm -hmm. Can you do a Nat King Cole imitation? No, I don't do it. Ah. Uh, I can't even do a Gilbert Godfrey impression. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I think you're like the only one who can't. <laughs> no, now, you're one of a kind, Gilbert. Oh, thank you, Marty. Now, now I, you were one of those. You were known for your insane dancing. Yeah. Well, I was a jitterbug champion. I won the, uh, I was a state jitterbug champion. Wow. I used to go dancing everywhere. I used to go up, uh, uh, wherever there was a dance where people were dancing, I'd go up there, I'd, I, I, I'd swing, i well, I was just one of the wild jitterbugs. I remember seeing clips of you. I think they're all of YouTube and stuff. It was yeah, I used to do back. Well, I do back, back movements and jumping. I I did wild dances. It, it looked it looked like a cartoon character, like no person. 
could actually. <laughs> I look like a cartoon character. Yes, yes. Oh, I... thanks for the compliment. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, it looked like no person, no real person <laughs> could move like that. Now, and now here's something Frank and I were curious about. Yeah. Everyone. Now, what was your catchphrase in when you and Steve Rossi worked together? Your, what? Yeah, your catchphrase that you are known oh. for. Oh, hello there. <laughs> well, what happened was we were appearing in, in Philadelphia, uh, a, club, a famous nightclub called the uh, Latin Casino. And we were in the middle of the act, and Steve asked me something, and I, I blanked out. <laughs> and I looked at him, and I, I, I knew I had a cover, so I just looked at him and went, hello there. <laughs> and, he, and he looked at me, what? <laughs> and he asked me the question again, and I said, hello there. <laughs> yeah, and I picked up uh, the audience, hysterical laughing. <laughs> and when the show was over, people started walking over to me. And said, "Hey, hello there!" <laughs> and I suddenly said, "Oh my God, I got a catchphrase. Uh, you wait all your life to find something like Joe Penner had. Uh, you want to buy a duck? Yeah. Or uh, Luke Casella had. I'm a bad boy. And uh, different. Uh, I I remember try to find a a catchphrase." That, that would uh, linger, uh, that people would recognize. And hello there, caught fire. So your signature and line came. at that came. time, we would do different people in the news. Yes. And Steve would introduce me. He'd say, like, here's the uh, president of France. And I'd say, bonjour there. <laughs> or Israel. <laughs> Shalom there. You know, and, and hello there, caught fire. And and I wrote it H E L L O D E R E. That's great. I remember a kid going to school and and he wrote something out with there and and he wrote a D E R E and the teacher said that that is not how you spell it. He said, Oh yeah, I I heard that comedian and I know that's how he spelled it. <laughs> I I remember as a kid watching you. And and they would always, I remember, like Steve Rossi would quite often play a reporter. And he'd hold a mic and go, you know, we're talking to whatever, the greatest football player or yeah. astronaut. And, and you would, like, turn around with your eyes going in five different directions. Mm -hmm. And you'd go, hello there. And I would, yeah. like, crack up each time. Yeah. It would kill me. <laughs> It became a national catchphrase. <laughs> All from a memory and, uh, lapse. Every time I even send a photo out, I, uh, like someone asks for a photo, I write, hello there, <laughs> to whoever, hello there, Marty Allen. And uh, it, 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 in fact, in, uh, I'm writing my book now, and it's, uh, hello there, welcome to my life. So when when do you think this? Well, you're still writing it. You still uh, well, we're we're uh, Karen and I are trying to whip it into shape, and uh, we hope to get it out uh, 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 within the next month, if possible. You know, there's so much, so many things that happen in your life that you try to reminisce about. And then we add, fo we're adding photos, and uh, we just have to, you know, you have to put it all together. Yeah, well, it's it's not all, easy. so yeah, the, I'll tell book, you that. the book is going to be called "Hello There, Welcome to My Life." As Which far sound, as I know, yeah, yeah. it it's it that sounds. I I will definitely read that. And now uh, we uh, need. Uh, we need. <laughs> I will. I. I'll make him read it, Marty. Yes, <laughs> uh, that's good. But I, I need. I have to have another joke. Cause another what? Another joke. I. Your jokes kill me. 
<laughs> well, I gave you. Well, you know. Whoa, I oh, I remember the one when the man called his mother in Florida. He said, Mother, how are you? She said, Not too good. I've been very weak. And the son said, Why are you so weak? She says, I haven't eaten in a month. He says, Mother, that's terrible. Why haven't you eaten in a month? She says, Because I didn't want my mouth to be full. She should call. <laughs> that's a great joke. Because I didn't want my mouth to be full in case you should call. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, okay we we have to wrap now and 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 we would love to have you back again because uh yeah marty will you do another one with us do another one yeah yeah another time well uh, well you know, okay but for, for the same price same price <laughs> Same as the Beatles got the first time. Yes. Yeah, uh, bucks. Oh, by the way, <laughs> how many of these uh, programs have you done already? I uh, think not, this is the third yeah, one. Yeah, this is just our third, and it was great. And, and we, oh, it, good. It, it, was, it was an honor to have you on. It's a treat. It was an honor to be on, Gilbert. Oh, thank you. I stayed you. home this afternoon. I, I even I even combed my hair and put on cologne because I want to be in shape. <laughs> well, your hair looks great and you smell terrific. And, and, and this has well, been. Thank you, Mark. I told you I'm one of your groupies. <laughs> Well, I don't know what that means. <laughs> He's going to throw some pictures in your window. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I hope this doesn't mean we have to go back to a hotel room together. Yeah. But well, the, Karen and I were just in Florida. You know, I love Florida. I love the diversity. You know what that means? Gilbert? What? Diversity in Florida. Yeah. I shook her. T- I shook I went over the tree, and I shook the tree, and you know what happened? Six oranges and 12 Cubans fell out. <laughs> <laughs> well, this, we, we, have to, we have to close up, and this has been great. Thanks, I, I Gilbert. Could, I could listen to your jokes, like, for, like, an entire day. If not, oh, more. wonderful. And so, this has been the great Marty Allen. Thank well, you, Marty. Thank you, the, the great treat. Gilbert Godfrey. Oh, thank you. Enjoy. That, that, and, and, and this is the end. And I'm Gilbert Gottfried, and my co host has been Frank Santo Padre. And this well, is your co host is very good. Oh, oh, Marty, you're a prince. Thank you. <laughs> well, at least you think so. I have problems with it. <laughs> but that's uh, we'll talk about that off the air. And, and <laughs> this... <laughs> Are you paying them the same thing you're paying me? Exactly. Less. <laughs> <laughs> and this has been the amazing Colossal Podcast. Thank you, Marty Allen. Thanks, Gilbert. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank you.